Hey, so my name is Kelly Massey. I'm a former elite athlete scholar at John Moores University, and I'm now back here lecturing on the PE programme. But I'm super excited because I'm also joined by somebody who was a scholar at the same time as me, and that's Johnny Meller. So Johnny, could you just give us a little introduction to yourself and who you are? Yeah, thank you for inviting me on. Um, obviously, my name is Johnny Meller. Um, I'm a marathon runner for my sins. Um, I train now in Manchester for Team Newbounds Manchester. And uh, yeah, I graduated John Moore's, um, probably should have thought, this, thought about that before I come on, um, 2006, something like that. Right? And it makes us feel so Yeah, old. I know, it does, doesn't it? But yeah, so, and then yeah, after university, I worked for a couple of years, um, but I know it was kind of just a stopgap really, just to kind of top up the pennies before I wanted to go professional and, uh, you know, solely focus on running. So here I am now, yeah, 35, getting old, getting on a bit. I won't mention that I'm at least two years older than you are now. Um, so tell me about your your kind of time at John Moores and being on a scholarship and what sort of athlete were you back then? Yeah, so I thought about that when I was sort of coming in to do the podcast today and I, I kind of look back and I, I do have regrets, I guess, in a way. Um, but that's not to say I didn't enjoy my time at John mm. Moores. Um, I think at the time I was very settled um, with my training group. I had a really good coach. Um, even that my swimming club was here and things like that. Mm. So I wanted to stay in the area. I was close to my family. I had a good, girl, a good girlfriend at the time, she's now my wife. Um, you know, so everything was kind of set up for me to stay in Liverpool. Um, I think I made the wrong choice in my course, what I chose. Um, I didn't do sport. But in terms of like being at John Moores, it was, it was great, um, you know, with the scholarship. And I probably just didn't get involved in that as much as I probably should have done back at times. So I'd say I, I thought I had all this set up outside of the uni. Mm-hmm. And it's only then since now, when I look back at some of the exercises we used to do in the gym, thinking, oh, at the time I wasn't really... I didn't think that was beneficial, but now like, I've seen different physios and strength and condition coaches and they're getting me to do similar stuff. So maybe I wasn't quite mature enough back then, but yeah, it was good, but I've definitely learned a lot since I've been at uni. I know exactly what you mean, because I remember when I was at uni, I never had really had this concept of the elite world of sport and how to kind of tap into different things, because I didn't ever see myself as being an elite athlete. It wasn't until my third year when I actually got on the scholarship and I started to tap in a little bit but again I just didn't have that sort of understanding so looking back what might have you done might what might you have done differently yeah I think I would definitely have got more involved in the strength and condition side of things you know I think that was a really useful tool that was right there on your doorstep you know top coaches and um, you know Dave's gone to Liverpool and I was and things mm. like that you know so we had world-class coaches here at John Moores and I just didn't take advantage of that so mm. if I could go back now I would have definitely done that but a bit like yourself, uni gave me the belief that I could make it as, you know, a proper athlete, mm-hmm. so we say, and I won books a few times when I was here, and that's what then gave me the confidence to kick on, and um, so I guess I was probably quite raw at the time, and, you know, maybe that was good as well, um, but looking back, I definitely would have gotten more involved in stuff like that. Yeah, and you don't realise how much time you actually have yeah. on your hands when you're yeah. at university. You're basically but... full-time, aren't you? Let's yeah. be honest, so it's, yeah, it, you know, it's good, but again, I don't know if it was my course because it was uh, building surveying I did but it was quite a lot of 9am lecture starts mm. so maybe I should have done sports science and got a bit, a bit longer in to get training done in the morning but yeah it was it was good anyway yeah I did enjoy it but you definitely take yeah, advantage of things of course. so tell me what have you kind of done in the meantime because obviously that was a very long time ago <laughs> and I won't mention how long um but tell me about what did you do to get yourself in this position where you're kind of making championships you're making teams yeah, I think like every athlete, it's been a long journey, lots of ups and downs along the way. Um, but it was a few years after I graduated and I kind of realised I was maybe, I'd say, go side, going sideways. I wasn't progressing as, mm-hmm. as much as I would like to have done. I'd been with my coach for a long time, so that was like quite a, it was a hard thing to do to sort of break up and, and move on. And, you know, it is, it's tough because he was almost like a father figure to me, my coach at yeah. the time as well. And, you know, I made a decision to move to a new coach and then literally just by chance, six months later, he got offered a job at New Balance as, you know, performance coach and they've set up a professional team. And, you know, they offered me the chance to move to Manchester and go and live in the athlete house and things like that. And I sort of jumped at the opportunity um, and that was kind of, that was it for me. Then I was away and, you know, that was kind of the start of my professional journey. And that's when I think that first year I made like World Indoors, Commonwealth Games, um, European Team Cup, you know, that was kind of my platform then to sort of mm-hmm. kick on. But... I then went to Kenya back end of that year and got sick in Kenya and then that put me back, you know, I lost probably a couple of years with that with the illness I got in Kenya, which then had a knock on effect on my body. Yeah. 
without going into too much today, you know, I got yeah, muscle wastage and bone density loss. So I had injuries that I'd never had, like stress mm-hmm. injuries before. Um, so you, you worked with Chris as well when you were competing in yeah. Chris Grammer. So we worked very hard to kind of almost rebuild me and get back. So then it's not now until, I guess, the last few years where I sort of got back up to that level again, I guess, and competing for, you know, teams and championships again. Yeah, I remember when I had, I, what well, we didn't know what we thought, I'd broken my foot and I had a cast yeah. on my foot. And I remember about two o'clock in the morning, sat in my student house trying to saw it off with a bread knife because I knew that I hadn't actually broken my foot but it really hurt and what it actually was was there was a tiny little hair or something that got into my foot so I couldn't actually wait there but then it's not just the fact that your foot's hurting because you're not putting weight on it you've got that muscle wastage and you try and come back you get shin splints and yeah it takes a a long time to come back what, running? Yeah. I still try and run now, but I tell you what, my Achilles are giving me grief, and I know I will always have Achilles issues, but yeah. I like running, I like the way it feels, like, yeah. even as someone who only likes to go around the track once, you you know, you sit it once, you don't need to go around again, that's yeah. my kind of philosophy, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you crazy distance yeah. runners, yeah. but even going out just on a 20 minute run, or not even timing, just thinking I'm going to go to that bridge on the canal mm-hmm. and back, it's yeah. just... It's like a nice escapism, yeah, isn't course. it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I don't yeah. have the pressure now. You, you yeah, you can enjoy it. Now. I still enjoy it, and that's the thing. I, like, people say how long you keep going for. And I, well, as long as I'm still enjoying it, as long as I'm healthy, I'll try and keep it yeah. as long as I can. I'm quite marathon running, you can kind of run a little bit later, obviously, you know, a little bit older yeah. and stuff. So it's, yeah, as long as I'm still enjoying it, and as long as I get out of bed in the morning and still yeah. want to run, then I, I'll keep going for a while, yeah. Yeah, because people still say to me, well, oh, why do you still train like this? Why do you still put that? I like doing yeah, it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's what yeah. you've been doing for so yeah, long, yeah. isn't it? So, some people might ask, oh, are you going to the next Olympics? Are you going to the next Commonwealth? Are you doing this? Can you kind of explain how would you actually qualify for a championships? Because I know yours is slightly different because you won't yeah. go to the British Championships, mm-hmm. which is maybe more typical of a track and field, I think. Yeah, so it's not always as simple as this. Um, and, you know, selection policies are selection policies, and sometimes you pre select and sometimes you're not. It's, mm. You know, that's. Yeah, that's another story, but this one was really simple for Commonwealth Games. We had a trial in Manchester uh, back in April, first across the line with the time goers. So yeah. I wasn't necessarily going to do Manchester. Um, I was hoping maybe to do, I think Boston it was, um, but in the end we decided to go for Manchester to kind of give me the option of a championship in the summer mm-hmm. if I wanted to do it. Um, and then obviously when you win the trial and you've got the time, I was kind of like, you know, selected for England to the Commonwealth Games. Especially after the last time having the time and not getting selected, mm. I kind of feel like I maybe unfinished business there. So yeah, yeah, I was you know delighted to obviously qualify and jumped at the chance to win for England again. So it's yeah, for this time very simple. You know, couldn't be any easier, and that's how I wish it was. You know, I know we were given plenty of notice as well to kind of say first across the line with the mm. time and you go and you know sort of thing. So yeah, couldn't be any easier. Rather than going into a championship this weekend and stuff, I guess because that's yeah, it's this weekend in the championships. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So so traditionally it'd be. First two cross the line if they've yeah. got the standard, and then are you last three in the marathon. You are, but again, they've only picked one, um, so very similar to you. to me. Yeah, back in two thousand and eighteen, mm-hmm. even though I was I had the time, I was over a minute inside the window. They didn't deem me a medal contender, so I wasn't picked to go to the Gold Coast mm-hmm. at the start. Um, my training partner was second in Manchester with the time. And he could have gone, but they said no to pick him. So yeah. they're only sending one for England in the Commonwealth Games, which yeah. is a shame, especially those home games. And it'd be nice to have, you know, full teams there. But yeah, you know, such is life. Because it's it's hard. I know some people go, oh, why haven't they taken this person? Mm-hmm. But they they kind of cap the numbers, yeah, don't yeah, they? And yeah. I know from Glasgow they took a huge team. I know that was dramatically yeah, cut yeah. Yeah. for Australia, yeah. and I think maybe a few more now because it's a home games. Yeah. But tell me about kind of your your prep for the season. Yeah, so I've not long come back from Mercia in Spain, because um, again, Birmingham in July, or end of July, it could be hot, it could be anything mm. really, it could be raining in England. Um, probably be raining. Probably, but we kind of want to make sure we're prepared. So I've gone to, you know, can get heat training rather than altitude this time. Mm. Um, and to be fine, a bit like I guess when I was at Liverpool, I've quite settled now. I've got some really good places to run on my doorstep mm. right on the edge of the Peak District. Birmingham is going to be a hilly course, so we've got a lot of undulating runs and things like that. And we've got like this reservoir, uh, Lady Bower. Mm. And it's kind of eleven mile loop around it, you know, a mixture of trail and road, and it's it's rolling terrain, which is actually perfect for Birmingham. So we'll do that. Um, we're doing like layer runs, so that means we'll go out for some like easy easy runs in a few layers, mm. just to kind of top up the heat. Okay. Um, a couple where we run and then get in the bath 
afterwards, warm bath, which is not nice. So, yeah, we kind of that's how we're prepared, but we kind of it works being at home for me. Mm. I'm quite settled, and um, we've got like my physio and massage therapist here and stuff like that as well, which is quite important for me. You say warm bath, no ice baths for you? No, I don't like them. I don't Do like them. My coach tries, but I, yeah, but there's conflict in science now, isn't there? So, yeah. I very much lean towards the side that no ice baths. So. Yeah, I always <laughs> think of it say so because you damage your muscles and you almost like treat it like a bruise, so yeah, you have, but you don't have to have it that cold. But I remember I always used to wear socks and then put the ice in. Yeah, I probably should do more. I do know that, but again, I'm just like... Yeah. yeah. Do you have, like, Normatex? Or yeah, so I have Norm- yeah, I wear Normatex, so I oh, tend I to go to them. Yeah, they are good, and they're just so easy. You can just sit there and watch television, mm. which is great, you know, and, you know, I do... I see them, I get massaged once a week. I see physio once a month. Mm. Um, you know, all sorts of massage guns and tools and things yeah, like that now, you know. Sorts. Kind of, Acupuncture. Yeah, you... yeah, yeah, we get that as well. Um, Any dry needling from Chris Bremer? So I don't get the dry needling from Chris, I get the tool. Oh, the I... tool. Yeah. So just to give you a, kind of a bit of um, an insight. So the tool, it basically feels like someone's trying to plane your skin off because yeah. um, it breaks down kind mm-hmm. of the fascia. And I remember that is the only time I have ever cried yeah. in a physio session where I used to crawl off the bed and plead Chris Brammer to stop. Yeah, and, one of my friends yeah. actually calls him the butcher. I think he forgets that there's a person on the other end of possibly, it. Possibly, yeah. 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 Possibly. But I remember once, I think it was two treatments ago, we were both sweating. <laughs> it was, you know, I was like, this can't be normal. Like, yeah. you know, two grown men so far. <laughs> well, yeah, but it was, um, it was literally the beads of sweat running down his face. So, yeah, but you mean he's a great physio and he's such a nice guy as well. Yeah, so. yeah, he is good. Um, so what about kind of your preparations for maybe a holding camp or when you when do you actually go to the village yeah funny like i literally just got the email today about that and we go to loughborough three days before we go into the, the village in birmingham which yeah. i'll be honest i don't really want to do uh, because mm. in glasgow in 2014 i actually got sick in the village yeah so i don't really you know i don't really want to do that i'd rather sort of drop in as late as possible so i like to try and get out of it somehow but i get you know got to go as part of the team and things like yeah. that so yeah the plan is to go to loughborough three days before going into the village so i would imagine maybe monday sunday monday i'd go to loughborough yeah. before the race on the saturday and then transfer to birmingham three days before the marathon so yeah it is what it is that's part of competing in championships but I th- I, sometimes i think it's a home games and the benefit of that is you can kind of leave your preparation you know do your preparation what you do at home that's yeah. kind of what i was hoping to do so but as i literally just got the email today well, that is the plan love going and birmingham yeah there's so no like, glamorous camps anywhere unfortunately no, but it's not like you have to acclimatize <laughs> no. i remember in, in our for glasgow our holding camp was in manchester yeah, yeah. and where we stayed was literally five minutes from my house yeah but i yeah. went to go and stay at the I, I lived as normal, but I stayed in the hotel just okay. because I didn't yeah. have to cook anything or wash uh, yeah, anything up. Yeah, but then I'd go yeah. home if I needed yeah. to wash my clothes yeah. or I'd train with my group as normal, yeah. but I just didn't have to look after myself, basically. Yeah, maybe maybe I could be persuaded to go to Loughborough after a while. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but tell me a little bit more about the village experience because a village, it literally is a village, isn't it? You yeah. kind of either have these apartment blocks or, or small houses. But what I always used to find bizarre is you could go to a cafe, pick up a sandwich and a coffee and just leave without paying. Yeah. And then when you come back into the real world, you realise, oh, my God, I've actually got to pay for this. Yeah, so yeah. tell us a little bit what a village experience is like. Yeah, I remember the first time I went in, that would, would have been for Glasgow 2014. I was just like, my mind was just blown because... Yeah. You got like these lounges, and there's like quite a few lounges as well where you got like PlayStations or Xbox, yeah. level all set up, TVs, yeah, films good. going. You got all these comfy bean bags on the floor, and as you say, these fridges where you kind of you go and help yourself, and you kind of just sort of look around and say, "Is anyone watching me here?" And <laughs> like put twenty, yeah, 20 bottles like, in your bag. You know, so it's that that side of it was fantastic. You know, and it's, I remember for Glasgow we had a good group of endurance athletes as well, so we could run around the village and things mm-hmm. like that as well. So. It never felt like we were trapped in there or anything no. like that. It was really, you know, nice place. The only thing I didn't enjoy was I didn't sleep well because the accommodation was really sort of like quite, I don't know, I just had a noisy house. Yeah. The, the walls dead thin and things like that. So, but yeah, like the, these villages, they're just great, you know, and it's, it's hard as well because I think I remember you saying Bob in the middle there, that one, is that that one? I've got a story. Oh, go on then. You've so, probably got a story in the room. I know, was it? No, it was in Rio, in right. village, in the village at the Olympics. So I'm walking along and I hear this whistle and I look up and yeah. it's Usain Bolt and he blew me a kiss from his balcony. Wow. So I grabbed it in my hand, <laughs> pretend to eat it and rub my belly and then blew one back. <laughs> Have you kept in touch since? No, no. no that's that's the my... The one that got away. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Too fast for me. My story's not that good. I was just, I just sort of looked at him and uh, wow, as you say, Bolt. So he's a tall guy. Yeah, isn't he it? didn't blow me any kisses, just to confirm. Maybe you should have blown one to him yeah, first. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, tell me, kind of, you say about in 2014 you did the 10k there didn't yeah, you yeah. unfortunately you didn't manage to finish yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the um australian commonwealth games unfortunately you didn't kind of get selected for that yeah. but hindsight's a great thing but what have you kind of learned from that experience that you're going to take into this commonwealth games yeah i mean i say i don't know whether you know i just picked something from the village or whether i just had something on the line anyway going mm. to glasgow but you know dropping out there was like one, i've only ever done it twice one cross country race in glasgow yeah. dropped out of race and it was such a horrible like feeling because I was I was running I knew I was in shape because like a week after my coach made me jump back in another race and then so and then my coach made me jump back in another race and we, you know ran well so it was just like a freak one off yeah. so whatever happened that day and I dropped out and I wanted to start into the stadium and to get away from there and the stewards made me walk all the way down the home straight you know so I had to walk in front of the you know the crowd with the race still going shame. on the walk of shame massively and I, I just I've never forgot that now this day so I've not dropped out of a race touch wood since so yeah. you know hopefully it doesn't happen again but yeah I think i say I definitely matured as an athlete I've learned to deal with pressure a lot more back then I, you know I remember well indoors as well as you know I just didn't deal with pressure back then I kind of thought yeah. well I'm at this level now I have to compete at a certain standard or whatever and now I kind of just learn to be more relaxed and just treat it as like, well, you know, as I say, pressure's a privilege, you know, going to these races, you know, kind of confident from training, but yeah. without the expectation. Um, you know, so I think I'm definitely a more mature athlete going into Birmingham. Um, and I just want to enjoy it because I know my career's not going to last forever. I'm mm. 35 now, as I say. So not only that many op- more opportunities to do this. So I just want to go and enjoy it, really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of a different mindset that I'll be going into at this time. Yeah, I think when I was at because I did the individual four and a relay, I think I was in that mindset that you were talking about now back then because yeah. I thought I tried to treat every race, every round, that it was my last race. Yeah. And in my, on paper, I should have never made the final, but in my head, I was going to make that final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. knew probably 150 to go, I think I was in fifth, yeah. but I knew I was going to qualify yeah, and yeah. auto qualified. But then when I actually got to the final, I almost didn't know what to do next because yeah, I just didn't yeah. think it was actually going to happen. You wanted to achieve what you wanted to achieve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I wasn't like, come on, like, what's next? Let's get a yeah. medal. Yeah. Um, but that stadium, I can never get over, like, the sound in that stadium where it kind of curves over and almost when you run around, it's like a Mexican wave. And I know yeah. it'll be different for you because you yeah, won't yeah. actually be in kind of the stadium. But what's the difference with going to kind of a home games compared to... You know, an interna- uh, you know, an international competition when you go abroad yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. of how it makes you feel and the environment. Yeah. I think, yeah, especially for me this time because I'm be the sole person for England. You know, you just hear like these random people shouting your name and stuff like that in the streets. And yeah. I guess because they're maybe a lot closer to the action as well, it almost feels a little bit more personal because they are shouting you and cheering you yeah. on. Um, but also, I get to see like my family and friends on the course as well, which mm. is really good with being a home game. So. You know, we can't beat some of these major city marathons, you know, done New York, Berlin, Seville, you know, done a few and then obviously London a few times. So it's kind of, they're amazing. And, you know, some of the atmospheres there make the hair stand up in the back of your neck. But I just think that home games, you know, and that's why for me, I chose to do Commonwealth Games over European champs because I wanted to compete in front of my home fans and be there, you know, in, you know, in Birmingham sort of thing. So, yeah, I just think it's quite special. And, you know, it might well won't come around again in my sort of career to mm. compete in a home game. So, Glasgow kind of felt a little bit like that for me, but it wasn't, you know, not quite home games, but mm. this obviously definitely is. Yeah. So what are your goals kind of in terms of the actual competition and the race? And maybe what do you actually want to get out of the experience as well? Yeah, I mean, I I, I like I want to go for a medal. You know, that's mm. the plan. Um, I think if I ran the way I ran in Manchester early in the year, I think kind of closed the way we, we did it, because, again, we ran Manchester tactically, so it was kind of sit in, be patient for the first half, and then kind of then wait till 20 miles. I wanted to go a little bit earlier, but again, my coach was like, you know, just be careful, be smart. Mm. And then when I got to 20 miles, I sort of kicked on. And, you know, I think if I can finish like that, like I did in Manchester, then I got a good chance for a medal. Obviously, the Kenyans will be strong, and the Ugandans. Um, but, you know, come off games, I think it's a good opportunity to try and win that medal, you know. it's um, yeah. Especially if it's a World Championship year, so some of the top, top guys will be going to the World Champs as well. So I think, you know, got to go into these things, you know, with ambitions and goals and, yeah, I want to kind of shoot for a medal and that's, that's what I'll be training for, yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly, aim for, aim for that goal. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, if I go out there and run, run the best I can on the day, then that's that's all I can do at the end of the day. Yeah, because I just think, why would you not want to get gold? I always think, exactly. like, well, what are you going to go for? PB? It's like, do you not want to get gold? Yeah. Oh, I'll never get gold. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, stop yeah. you from wanting no, it, does course, it? No, of course. You know, I, I say, like, you know, I know I'm going to be sitting, so I want to go for medal, but I honestly feel if I can finish the way I finish in Manchester, then there's a chance. So that's what we try and go for. Yeah. So... You've had like a few times where you've actually, you know, towed the line at a home champs, you're in your kit, or maybe Glasgow at a semi home champs. What does that make you kind of feel inside? Do you, because I know I always get nervous maybe warming up in the cool room, but as soon as I get onto the track, it's almost like everything disappears and you're in this like zone in this bubble. Like, what's that actual feeling like? Because pe- there's so many people that would just would never ever experience that. Yeah, you know, and I guess it goes back to what I said before about pressure being, you know, privilege because you're in that position, you know, and people mm-hmm. kill for it. And again, like, when I maybe didn't deal with pressure very well, you know, that maybe I couldn't handle that. But now mm-hmm. it's kind of like you represent your country, you know, mm-hmm. you've, you've worked all your career, all your life for this. You know, I started swimming from the age eight, you know, mm-hmm. and I was just doing sport all through my, my junior years and stuff like that. So it's actually be at a point now where you're running your country is yeah. incredible you know and i think you know obviously how proud it makes your family and things like that is a really big big one for me um but i just don't i just don't think you can be you know it's just again you know once you don't think you realize maybe when you look back at your career that's when you realize how lucky you are to do that i guess yeah. but i suppose when you're in the moment you kind of just literally you treat it almost like any race, any normal race and just you want to go out there and perform yeah. i guess and you always want more even if like you do a good time you always want more of course you do, you? Yeah, yeah yeah i remember at uh, london 2012 when martin rooney um was about i don't know if it was in his heats or his semis or whatever for the 400 and the, literally the whole stadium was going rooney, <laughs> yeah. rooney, and all he could think about was not full starting oh god yeah yeah i don't have that pressure i don't think but it's uh yeah it's I think back to those, some of those diamond leagues, the pressure in those call rooms, what you said about them. Yeah. You'd have to go to the call room like half an hour before you race, don't you? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. more like 45 minutes yeah. since that. I'm ready to cool yeah. down. And then everyone's then. sort of like prowling up and down and mm. everyone's got their pre-race rituals, haven't they? But yeah. yeah the, the diamond, I used to be very nervous at those. Yeah. I remember like this Polish girls always slapping their thighs yeah. and things like yeah. that. You see with the diamond leagues, like Emily Diamond who also does a 400 as well. She has this thing that when the cameras come round, and like everyone waves, she always wa- waves at the wrong time. So she's like, right, I'm doing a diamond league. I'm not going to wave. But then they announced her as the first ever diamond because obviously right. Emily Diamond yeah, yeah, to yeah. run at a diamond league, and everyone went mental. Yeah. So she had to wave. But what's kind of your your thing with the camera? Do you give a little wave, no, a little salute? No, no, no. Do you have no, a special yeah, Johnny yeah. Mellor stance? Definitely not. No, <laughs> definitely not. I just literally wave and it's like head down, wave, and then the camera move on to the next person. So yeah, definitely not any any waving or salutes to the crowd that's for sure okay so i've got one kind of last question for you so i used to have this uh, you know i don't even know where it came from but i always used to go when i was in going to the cornwall and um, call room i'd go in the fourth toilet along every time okay. even if there's only two yeah. toilets i go one two three four and i'd make yeah. up the fourth toilet yeah. is there any kind of ritual that you have or anything weird that you think about there's been an athlete that you know you, is normal to you, but other people think it's really weird. Um, um, not really. Um, not that I, know. I mean, I always do the same thing on the start line. I sort of slap my legs like mm. Polish girls, as you said, um, and I sort of jump up and down, and you know, sort of give myself that last minute positive kind of you mm. can do this, and that's that's it really. Other than that, I, there's not you know, I'll always stick to the same routine in terms of warm yeah. up and things like that and what I do. Um, but yeah, there's no no sort of specific. I don't go to a certain portal or anything like that. It's just. You obviously not going to tomorrow from Porto Luz. No. Um, <laughs> you just go when you're running, don't you? Some do, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing special anyway. Yeah. Um, just my normal kind of like, just last minute, just sort of remind myself of the plans or the mm. tactics for the race, like you know what the process is for that, you know, process goals for that particular mm. race, and then, and then go really, you know, it's kind of that is the bit when I do get nervous still when you're the last minute on the start mm. line. It's like because the warm up is all part of the process for me, and you kind of. That's it. You you win. You you prepare for your race, but it's that last minute for you on the yeah. start line. You're like, okay, we're doing this now. And that's that's, that's that's that bit where I'm like, so I can imagine when you're on the track and you're sort of in your blocks and the stadium still mm. that must be nerve wracking. But London Marathon actually do like a heartbeat, 
So they hold you on the start line, <gasps> and it's like, okay. boom, 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 boom. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and that was literally that could be your own heart, like, and that's like, I'm like, oh, Intense. and then ban, you know, you're away, sort of thing. Well, I say ban, like, you're away really fast, and rather you're not, yeah. but it's still, you know, it's really special anyway. Yeah. Well, that was a boring answer to the last question. You could have made up something sorry. like some crazy little ritual, that yeah. you have. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, so, no, like, power song, no, like, little mix no. power, or anything like that. No, no, definitely, no. No, sorry, I can't. I can't even think of a good one to tell you. Never so mind. No, sorry, it's marathon running. It's very different sport. You need to get out hard and kind of be really. I need to get out relaxed almost. Yeah. And conserve energy. So it's almost. I almost need to be the opposite. Yeah, like run yeah. comfortably uncomfortable. So the marathon, like marathon, it's all about kind of. Until halfway, certainly, is being as relaxed as possible, mm. conserving as much energy as possible, mm. and even then, you want to try and get to twenty miles, feeling like that. And then, I think, good day or bad day, if you added Kipchoge or whoever, that last. 10 kilometers and the marathon is going to hurt no matter what so it's kind of okay. you just kind of just yeah i guess i am the total opposite to four i want to be as relaxed almost as possible to yeah. kind of, if i go off hard that's it game over yeah screwed. yeah yeah well good luck from everybody at lgmu thanks Thank so you. much for giving your time up to come in and see us again yeah. and we'll all be looking out for you and cheering you on pleasure thank you very much again for inviting me on it's great to chat to you cheers johnny nice one